Hello, welcome to the Math 135 video for the product rule for three terms. The intensity for this video is mild, and this is considered an essential video. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to find the derivative of the product of three or more differentiable functions, you should be able to generalize and specialize a formula, and you should be able to prove the power rule for positive integer powers. Our motivation will be the product rule for two terms. So to remind you, if f and g are differentiable functions, then the derivative of their product is not just the product of the derivative, it's this kind of strange formula, where you take the product of one and multiply it by the original, and you add the original multiplied by the derivative of the other. So because this formula is kind of strange, we have questions about, well, what happens to the derivative of other products. So one natural question is, how do you compute the derivative of the product of three functions, so f, g, and h? And this is an abstract question. This is a question for all functions. And one way to help understand those, uh, those abstract questions is to first deal with concrete functions and then try to generalize. So let's look at the function x sine x e to the x. What's the derivative of that? So our big idea is that we can write x sine e to the x as the product of two things. So we'll group x and sine x together and we'll leave e to the x on its own. And then you can apply the product rule multiple times. Let's see what this looks like. So the derivative of x sine e to the x, we first think of our function as having the x sine x part and the e to the x part. And because this is the product of two functions now, we can apply the product rule for two terms. So this is like our f. So this is like our f right here. And this is like our g. So this is f prime g, f g prime. And notice that I've just written everything out slowly, and I'll compute these derivatives uh, now. So here we take the derivative of e to the x, and it becomes right here. And then when we take the derivative of x sine x, we use the product rule again. So this is the derivative of f g, f derivative of g. And we have this e to the x hanging out outside. And now here we compute the derivative of x and sine x. Derivative of x is just one. The derivative of sine x is cos x. And now here we go. This is our derivative. And let's expand it just a little bit, just for fun. So here's our derivative. The derivative of x sine x e to the x is this. And we did it by applying the product rule two times. So here's one application of the product rule. And then the second one, was right here to take the derivative of x sine x. Now we're going to generalize this. So the question is, how does x sine e to the x relate to its derivative, which we computed? Now, if you take a look at it, there's some similarities. So we see that there's some sine x's and cos x's. We see each of the terms has an e to the x, and these two terms have an x. One thing you might be tempted to do is simplify this, sort of factor it as much as you can. And it turns out that that's not going to help you understand this product. But let's look at it another way. So here was a special case of f, g, and h. Now let's do it in full generality and see if that helps us understand what's going on. So let's take the derivative of f, g, and h. We won't know anything about these functions other than they're differentiable. So again, we're going to play this game where f and g are considered one and h is considered our second function. We apply the product rule to this. So it's the derivative of this times this plus the derivative of this times the derivative of h. Now, these ones are all simplified. There's nothing more we need to do. But over here, we need to use the product rule again. So now let's apply the product rule to f and g. So this becomes f prime g plus f g prime and all multiplied by this h on the outside. And if we expand this out, we get this. So now take a moment to look at this formula. 
The derivative of the product of these three things is this. Can you express in words what it is? Or how to remember this formula? Well, it looks like we took the derivative of one multiplied by the others, and then the derivative of the middle one multiplied by the other two, and then the derivative of the third one multiplied by the first two. So this derivative is sort of bouncing term by term. And if we look at what happened with x sine e to the x, we have the derivative of x here, we have the derivative of sine here, and then we secretly have the derivative of e to the x here. So by looking at something in more generality, it's help, it helps us see what the general pattern is and not just um, an answer that pops out, right? Like just looking at this answer doesn't really tell us how this works in general, because something simplified, this e to the x derivative was itself, so it sort of hides what's really going on. And this is one of the reasons why we might want to look at something more general, is because it makes it clear uh, what exactly is happening. So we can capture this as the product rule for three terms. So we'll put it in a box here. Here it is. Now we're going to ask two questions, which are questions you can always ask when you get a new formula. So first off is generalizing. So what's an even more general formula for the product rule? So we looked at the product rule for two terms. This is the product rule for three terms. What's a natu another natural thing that you might want to look at? There's more than one right answer for this. The second direction we could go is instead of making something more general, we could make it more special. So this is called specializing. So what's an interesting special case of the product rule for three terms? Well, let's look at that one, because that one's a little bit harder to understand. So here's one special case. Take f, g, and h all to be the function just x. So if you plug these into the product rule for three terms, you get this. And so it's 1 times x squared, x times 1 times x, and x squared plus 1. So that's x squared, x squared, and x squared. The answer is 3x squared. Well, that's good. That tells us that the derivative of x times x times x is 3x squared. So that's actually the power rule for three terms. So now we actually know that the product rule for three terms uh, is related to the power rule for three terms. Let's look at one other special case. What happens if you use the product rule for three terms and h is one? Well, in this case, what you get is the, pro the derivative of f times g is the derivative of f times g times one, which since h is one, it's the derivative of f times g times h. And then if you work everything out, you'll see that you eventually get down to f prime g plus f g prime. So you can use the product rule for three terms to prove the product rule for two terms. So the product rule for three terms is more general than the product rule for two terms. It's more powerful. Let's end with some exercises. Use the product rule for two or three terms multiple times to find the product rule for four terms. What should it be? Here's a test question. Suppose that you're only allowed to use the product rule three times, and you are not allowed to use the power rule, except for the derivative of x is one. Find the derivative of x to the eight. Here's another test question. Use the product rule to find the derivative of x sine x, tan x, secant x, e to the x. So the product of all five of those. Do not simplify your answer. And now let's take a moment to reflect. Find a formula for sine of alpha plus beta plus gamma in terms of sine alpha sine beta sine gamma, cos alpha, cos beta, and cos gamma. How is this similar to the strategy we used for finding the product rule for three terms? Finally, how does specializing and generalizing help you understand a mathematical formula? Thank you very much and have a great day.